Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can auto run a Python script as soon as your Raspberry Pi boots to the desktop. And trust me, if you've spent hours looking all over the internet to find the right method, I promise this one actually works. I looked all over the place to try to find a way to auto run or auto start a Python script when I boot up the Raspberry Pi. Now, there are lots of options online for doing that so that when the command line interface loads, it auto runs a script, but there are none that seem to be available for the desktop or graphical user interface. That was extremely frustrating. I tried all of the methods they mentioned and every single time I'd get to the desktop, nothing would happen and I'd have to try something else. I finally found the answer in a forum about the Raspberry Pi where a user submitted the way that they do it. And so I'm going to show you that here. And I'm also going to tell you how you can strip it down so that you get the bare essentials of what's necessary to load your Python script on boot. So without further waste of time, let's get started. So just before we get into the method necessary to do this in the graphical user interface, let's take a quick look at the methods that will work if you're using a command line script that works fine from the command line. Any of these methods, as you look them up online, they'll be commonly found. And by editing those files and adding different commands, you'll be able to find something that works to launch your script from the command line. However, if you need to launch from the graphical user interface or desktop instead, this is the method that you do. We're going to create a new file with a .desktop extension and we're going to put it in the home pi config auto start folder. All of those entries that you see below starting with desktop entry and ending with the terminal are all switches and commands that are necessary for that particular file in order to make it work properly. In the end I'll show you how you can strip out most of those things and get down to the bare essentials. The script that I'm going to be using is just a very simple user interface that's created using the PySimple GUI module. And the great thing about this is it's very easy. It uses uh, just the one module and it uses this layout here, which basically defines the three different rows that I'm going to use. First row is going to have some text that says GUI auto run at startup. Second row is going to say it works, click exit to go to the desktop. And the third row is simply going to be an exit button. Of course, this is super simple just to demonstrate how well it works. The settings in the window command are going to be what causes it to actually work full screen. There are three different items here that you need to get right in order to take up the entire width and height of the Raspberry Pi screen. I'm using the touch screen here. It uses an 800 by 480 pixel display. So I need to put that into the size and I need to make sure that I add this finalize equals true switch because the window.maximize here below does depend upon it. So when I use the size, the finalize and the window maximize together, I am now able to fit the entire full screen of the Raspberry Pi touch screen. This event loop where that begins with while true is where all of the events from the different widgets or elements are read and all of their values are stored using that window.read function. There is a print command here that's going to print the event and values to the terminal window, which you don't really need except for the point of troubleshooting where it comes very handy. And then every one of these persistent windows also comes with an if statement, which is going to break out of the true loop if, uh, if the window is exited, which causes the window to close. Now, just running this on my desktop, you're gonna see here that that's what it's going to look like. And when I put it onto the Raspberry Pi, it's gonna fill the entire screen. Now here I've copied the file that I want to my Raspberry Pi desktop. So in order to actually set it up, I'm gonna open the folders and I'm gonna look here for the .config folder. Now, if you haven't noticed, it isn't there by default. You have to show the hidden folders and then you'll see the .config folder and there should be a folder called auto start. Now, the first time I started playing with this, there actually wasn't a folder called auto start. So if you take a look and there isn't one, you simply need to create it. You're just going to right click here and choose new folder and you're going to call it auto start all lowercase letters and that's going to let the GUI interface know that it needs to read something from that folder. Now you're going to create a new empty file inside of that folder and you can call it whatever you want. The most important thing is that the extension is dot desktop. Now 
Now we're gonna open that file that we created and inside we're gonna paste that information that I listed there, which are all the different switches and commands needed in order to create a proper file. The most important one here that you'll need to change is the one that actually displays the path to your particular file. Mine is left on the home Pi desktop uh, folder. And so if you just follow that through, you can put yours wherever you'd like, but make sure you put the correct path in. Now that we have that there, we're gonna save it. We're gonna reboot and let's see if it actually loads our particular file when the graphic user interface starts. You find here that it's always a little bit nerve wracking as you fire the whole thing back up and let it start and do its thing. And you're never sure if it's actually gonna work after doing this so many times and trying different methods. I was worried that it was never going to work, but sure enough, once it's set up properly in this folder, As soon as the desktop opens, you see it for just a second and then boom, your script runs and you can see it there. So I can click the exit button, as I mentioned, that I defined earlier and it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Now, if we go into this file that we created, you can see here it's called GUI controller because that's what I put as the name. We can strip out all of this information except for two lines. And the two lines that are important are the ones in uh, square brackets at the very beginning, the first line there that says desktop entry. And the other one that's really important is the exact line or executable line, which also has the path to our file. Those two are the ones that are absolutely necessary. The rest of the things might be necessary depending on how your particular script is going to run. Perhaps it needs some of those other switches to be enabled. For my case, I was able to strip all the rest of them away really just be able to put the desktop entry field and also the path and have it work perfectly as it started back up again. As you can see here, as it all loads up again, that my script, once the desktop loads, immediately loads right after. Once again, it's ready to go and I can use either my mouse or reach over with my finger and of course tap it and use the touch screen features as well. So now you can see hopefully how easy it is to set up one of these uh, files so that it'll boot properly when you get to the desktop of your Raspberry Pi. I hope that solves the problem and answers the question of how you can run a script when your Raspberry Pi first boots up into the graphical user interface and you can breathe a sigh of relief knowing that it'll work on your future project. I know for me, I'm super satisfied that it works. There's many more GUI projects that I want to do in the next few videos. If you like the videos we're making and this type of content, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified of future videos that come our way and keep checking back every week as I post a new video every Saturday morning. Until next time, in all your pursuits of just the right code that finally works, don't be afraid to be balder.